good morning good evening namaste hola bonjour kere meir and marapan this is namya joshi your host for the day welcome to episode 57 of the podcast each one teach 10 an amazing world of stem an inspiring venture where we will be discussing that stem is part of every day for every kid we all will learn together how to build a stem culture Well, for today, my guest is Ms. Laurie Guyon, who is the coordinator of model schools at Washington, Saratoga, Warren, Hamilton, Essex, BOCES. Her role focuses on professional learning around technology integration for over 31 school districts across five countries. As well as this, Laurie is the Capital Region District Director and Trainer for NYSCATE. the new york state association for computers and technologies in education it's so nice to have you here today lori so how are you doing today i am so excited to be here too namya i've been watching your journey for quite some time and uh i've been listening to your podcast and hearing all of the different people that you've had on so it's a pleasure to be here thank you so much and it's an honor to have you here on my podcast as well So before we move on we would love to know more about you and uh, all the projects you're working upon right now and what's planning for the future. Sure. So in my role at it, it's a it's a BOCES which is a Board of Cooperative Educational Services and we have them throughout New York state here in the United States um as a way to organize and support uh school districts. So my my BOCES actually supports 31 school districts across five counties in upstate New York. So a very large geographic area um you know the districts when i visit them they could be an hour in any direction uh as far as the the distances can go and my role really is doing professional learning around technology here in new york we also have computer science and digital fluency standards and these are new these are uh ones that were i was lucky enough to be on the authoring committee um back a few years ago and they're being rolled out into classes now they have to be fully implemented in our classrooms from kindergarten through 12th grade um by september of 2024 so my role really has been to help educators see how they could use computer science and really think about digital citizenship in their classrooms and that could be through professional learning it could be through pushing in the classes and doing different activities uh it's really anything that i can do to support this roll out uh because i see how important computer science and digital fluency can be for for everyone that's actually really great that you play a very crucial role in professional learning technology and also implementing digital citizenship in classroom so as you mentioned about computer science as well so there's this quote uh, that computer science is no more about computers than astronomy is about telescopes so what is your thought about this yeah when you hear computer science a lot of people think uh, uh, you know especially when i push in a classes they often will say well it's coding it's it's uh, the language of computers and it's uh, how we uh, communicate in this digital world but it's so much more than that really computer science if you take it to a foundational level it's all about um thinking of the process it's all about critical thinking it's all about following um a step by step order in order to solve a problem so really when you're thinking about computer science we do it every day just by thinking about how can we get from point a to point b in a, in a process so um yes it can be coding it can be robotics um it could be creating a website and organizing it you know using some sort of back code or anything along those lines but a lot of times it could just be something as simple as origami or um thinking about how you write an essay there's a lot of correlation to the engineering process or the design process you have a problem and you're looking for a way to solve it and really that's what computer science can do and should do in our classes we really want our students to be thinking critically we want them to um think like a scientist would think like um you know a technician might uh you know i mean your quote is beautiful and and it's it's an important one i mean when 
when you're 16 here in New York, you're allowed to get your driver's license. And we don't expect our, our students, you know, when they're getting their driver's license to know the ins and outs of how the engine works in a car, but we want them to understand how to drive the car. And it's kind of the same thing with computer science. There's all those different layers and you can understand all of those layers at different levels based on what you need to, you know, do whatever it is that you want to do, whether it's drive a car or program a robot or solve a math problem. Absolutely. I agree with that. And when you're talking about, you know, computer science, um, when we talk about like just the word like a computer, it is just meaning to run an algorithm. And what computer science is all about is finding good algorithms and expressing them in a way that allows them to be run. But if you, you can run the same algorithm, for example, human beings, like it could be slow and error prone, but you can definitely do it. And very often, like when we're like, you know, debugging a program in coding, uh, we can mentally run the small pieces of the code in the head to see where it's going wrong. And in this way, computers are convenient items that allow, you know, to run the algorithms efficiently. Similarly, it comes with astronomers as well. Astronomy is much easier with powerful telescopes. But it's not just about telescopes, it's about like the way you see and measure them. Like you mentioned, uh, computer science, computer thinking, we're doing it every day from point A to point B in every in any task, like you mentioned, as simple as origami or writing an essay. That's just helping us to think more critically. And that's exactly what we need to learn as a future skill of tomorrow. Absolutely. Yeah, you need, I mean, um, you know, when you're taking an exam and you're studying for it, you're, you're using a process to study, right? Um, like my daughter, when she uh, is studying for an exam, she, she likes to separate herself from all sounds and all noises, you know, shuts off her phone. And she says, I'm going to take this hour and study every day, at, you know, as we're getting closer to to the test. But she's also thinking about the process of how she should study. It's not just um, rereading everything, right? It might be highlighting, it might be uh, rewriting your notes, it could be index cards, it could be anything that you do to make sure that you have the information to be successful on that exam. When you're thinking about computer science, it's very similar to that. You're thinking about your process. What way is going to help me um, or help the computer do what it is I want it to do? Um, I remember when I was in school, um, we had a computer lab and our first task was to create flowcharts. And, and the flowchart was set to uh, teach us how to code our name on a computer so it would repeat. So it would just be like an infinite loop. And I remember thinking it was so cool that the computer is saying my name over and over and over again, or I could have it do a simple phrase. And uh, that's really the beginning, right? It's no different than anything that we do. We start with that foundation and then we build from it. And I think, I, I think that computer science really has become uh, you know, very much integrated in everything we do. And I don't think it should be something we we have as a, a separate idea it should be something that that is done in every class with every subject that we that we you know want to teach you and we want to be able to uh, support you with right i agree with that and also like computing has fundamentally reshaped society and particularly in recent decades as computing devices have become like very uh, you know known around the world so what is the impact of computing uh, according to you? Well, see, that's a great question. So, because here in New York with the standards that we have, we have a whole sub concept area just on impacts of computing because it's, it's so much. We are right now in what's called the fourth industrial revolution. We've had other ones with steam and, and such, but really we're, um, we're in this one with uh, our connected world. Right now, I'm in New York State, you're in India, and we're able to have this conversation, right? Um, this is something that may seem uh, you know, unheard of 10, 20, 30 years ago uh, to be done in such an easy way that we're able to communicate this way. And so this revolution that we're in about technology and, and using um, you know, sensors and the internet of things, and we're thinking about all of the ways that we connect, uh, it, it really has touched everything in our lives. Um, if you look around your home, I guarantee you have uh, things that are are automated. I have a vacuum that I push a button and it vacuums my floor for me, right? Uh, you know, we have sensors in our uh, devices like an Alexa or a Google Home, those sort of things that, that can communicate with us. 
Um, there's a lot of uh, talk right now in social media about some of the artificial intelligence uh, programs that are coming out. Um, and we need to be able to harness it. And when we're talking about that impact, we have to think about how we can use this technology for good, right? To, to be able to do different things with it, to help others, to support others. Um, yesterday, I was working with um, sixth graders, so 12 and 13 year olds. And the uh, the students were doing what we call a cybersecurity takeover day. And we were talking about the importance of passwords and understanding what can happen when you use technology and how you can make sure to protect yourself. Um, my students were building uh, with Legos different characters that can... Um, the, the the Lego the Lego bricks were used to to help the students think about what their characters could do to protect themselves online and support others. So they were uh, creating something that would help you realize if you make a good password versus a not so great password um, that protects you from cyberbullying and um, and thinks about. Uh, they had ones that would help you protect against viruses. So we have to think about all of those uh, those things that can happen when we're talking about the impacts that, that computing can have. And we also, you know, it's a big word, but uh, we have to talk about the ethics of it. Anytime we build something, we create something. Um, is it going to help uh, others or, you know, is it going to be supportive? Does it have the features that are needed to make sure that it's accessible? Those of all, are all things you have to think about as well when you're doing your design. Um, you know, sometimes it could just be fun, right? When you use Minecraft, uh, you can code a loop so that chickens fall from the sky, right? Um, and, you know, that seems really fun, but but maybe when you're building uh, different things, those fox are going to come around and eat the chicken. And now we can start talking about the life cycle and, and all of the different parts there. So I think that uh, when you talk about the impacts of computing, you're really thinking about how is it going to help others? What do I have to think about to make sure that I'm supporting uh, myself and others? And how can I make sure that what I'm designing is accessible to everyone? Right. That's really significant that you're talking about how computers have changed the world in many ways. And I totally agree that they allow like a huge amount of information to be stored in a small place. They allow person people to calculate mathematically with ease. They also allow us to communicate with one another through internet sites such as Facebook, Twitter, Insta, Zoom, so many things. And also they help us to, you know, keep the data safe. And like you're talking about like the theme of uh, fourth industrial revolution, it is all about like uh, you know s- cyber physical systems. But now the fifth industrial revolution is all about the man and machine, but otherwise known as robots or cobots. So in this way, like um, if we are creating them, then we need to know how to use tech for good, like you mentioned. And whenever we're creating anything, we must keep in mind what are the features of what we're making in the design, that it is focusing upon more how it is helping other people and like always be able to see that what are the faults in that and what I could improve. That's really important. I totally agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. We don't want to create something and then realize, oh gosh, there's people that can't use it or it, it, it is something that uh, fails to help somebody else. Um, that is never the, the intent in design, right? We want to make sure that, that anyone can do it. And then we also want to think about uh, what careers can happen from from whatever it is we design. Uh, we have to think about all of the different careers that use technology now. Um, there's very few that you don't touch a computer. Um, you know, farming, for example, you often think, well, farming, how does that use technology? Well, they fly drones over their fields to see where the water needs to go. Um, some of them have... Um, uh, lawnmowers that actually are, or tractors rather, that will actually plow the fields um, that are autonomous. They're not something that has to have a driver on it. So there's uh, there's so many different fields that are using technology in really creative ways to save us time, to make sure that we're more efficient. Um, maybe it's more environmentally um, savvy. You know, we're thinking about all of the different uh, ways that we can support each other um, and our globe and, and our world. Right, and actually reminds me of one of the projects that I worked upon with three of my friends uh, for the New York Academy of Sciences. So it was basically like, you know, uh, a lot of fertilizer that is being used by the farmers leads to eutrophication because that runoff is leading to fish kills as well. So we worked with, upon this project that's like a machine. So whenever the farmers are giving out the fertilizer, 
there's a like a specific amount of uh, that they can use that depends upon which crop they're using and then you have to just enter like which crop it is and it sets like after this point the fertilizer machine would stop working that is basically a way to prevent because we can't stop something but we need to focus on how we can prevent because prevention is better than cure so that's how we worked upon the project and we're still getting up the things ready so that we can get it to the world as well what a great idea right we're we're saying we we know that you need fertilizer but at some point we have to realize how much is too much of anything so even something good has to have those limits and that's what technology can do for us it can help us identify those moments where what we're doing makes a lot of sense and um and we want to keep doing it and where we need to to kind of draw that line and say okay that's enough um you know, it goes back to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, right? We're, we're right. thinking about all the things that we can do to help each other out um, in a global world. And we have to think about our impacts, um, not just of computing, but in everything that we do um, all around the world. And uh, that's a perfect example of it. I, I'm excited that you're, you're bringing this to the world. I think it's going to be something that is very well uh, needed um, everywhere. Thank you so much. So as we're talking about computer science, what do you have to say about like starting computer science in the early ages of our life? So I think that we already are doing a lot of computer science without reali realizing it. Um, you mentioned algorithms, for example. Um, when I go into uh, the younger grades and I talk to them about digital citizenship and we do different things with, uh, with, uh, with our students, um, a lot of times what we're doing, the process is an algorithm itself. Um, it could be something is we have to line up to go into the hallway, right? We have rules as far as how we, we communicate and what we're supposed to do and what we're not supposed to do as we're walking through the school. And, um, you know, instead of just saying we're going to line up by height, we might say let today's algorithm is, you know, um, based on whatever it happens to be. And you can line up that way. So I think in the younger grades, it could be something as simple as um, getting that common vocabulary, making sure that we all know how to communicate uh, in, in using, you know, the language of computer science. Um, but then it's also giving some experiences. I mean, as young as, uh, you know, six or seven years old, there's nothing that says you can't teach origami or a basic recipe or um, talk about the steps to tie your shoes. All of these uh, are also algorithms and can start talking about the foundation of computer science. I do uh, do think, though, that um, in correlation with anything with computer science, you have to talk about digital citizenship. As soon as you touch a computer, you have to make sure that you're building that foundation as well. Um, so you really want to think about, you know, are you being kind? What impact is it having on, on you know, everybody? Um, when you were talking about your design with uh, the fertilizer, I was thinking there was um, a study that was done with cybersecurity, and they were trying to find ways to um, help with bullying, uh, you know, to try to stop cyberbullying. And there was a student, and I don't remember uh, the student's name, but the student had developed a program that anytime you went to post something, a pop-up would come up on your phone and says, do you want to uh, send this? And it didn't make a difference what they had written. It just was this pop-up to give a pause. And they found that um, it was somewhere in the in the 90 or above percentile uh, where people stopped, didn't actually post the, the negative comment because they took that second to pause. And um, so why not start to teach those types of activities at a young age, that, that pausing before we post and to think before we, uh, we do something because it can really help um, build those skills at a very young age that we know we're definitely going to need as we get older. Absolutely. Um, computer science, I totally agree with the fact that it's there with us since our younger ages. Like you mentioned lining up to go to the hall. And even like when we're making tea, like we have to, we actually know the steps, but we never think about it as an algorithm or a code until we start actually making one. And like when you talked about communicating, it's actually like when a small child even learns how to speak. So the small words in scattering way is what helps them to make like a full sentence. That is in a way coding as well. And like you mentioned about computer science being linked with digital citizenship, that is actually vital because we must know what we impact that we have on others and like pausing before posting that's a really strong line that we need to know what we are saying to other people and it could that hurt them or could that you know affect their feelings so we must like 
post in a way that it's not affecting anybody and it's not affecting us as well. Absolutely. We want to spread kindness, right? In everything that we do. Yeah, absolutely. And there are some countries that actually teach uh, how to speak English by teaching uh, coding at young ages, because a lot of coding languages actually follow the English syntax. So when you're thinking about the structure of a sentence, just like you said, learning how to speak and how to put your words together, um, it really is the beginning of learning a code. It's, it's a way to think about how you uh, process anything, any information. Um, so yeah, we really do have computer science in everything we do. Right. So I have a fun question for you. What do you hope the world would look like in the next 10 years? <laughs> That's a big question, Namya. <laughs> um, see, I am, I am a, a, a uh, somebody whose glass is always uh, is always full, right? I'm I'm always smiling. I, I'm always a happy person, and I would love uh, for us to all find more happiness. That we could um, find more ways to support each other. Um, I'd love the world to be a bit kinder, um, you know, especially in social media and online. Um, I also think that uh, we need to start thinking about, um, you, you know, computer science and digital citizenship and the importance of of giving our, our students, giving, uh, you know, our young students uh, the opportunity to experience and understand um, what those um what those skills are, or giving them those skills, so that way, whatever it is they do when they're when they're out of school, um, they're going to be doing uh, great things in very positive ways. So, I'm very hopeful that it'll be a kinder world. I agree. Like there are many things that would happen. Like the world population would reach 8.5 billion. Um, countries like Nigeria would take over US as the third most populous country in the world. We'd have so many things coming up. But still, at the end, it depends upon how we change ourselves. Do we become kind or we become worst version of ourselves? So again, at the end of the day, it matters what is in our behavior. So we need, we need to remain humble, calm, and also helping other people to spread kindness and happiness is what matters. Yeah, it's all about helping others, right? I mean, if, if at the end of the day, you can think about what you did that day and you help somebody else, you've had a good day and you have a reason to smile. Right, and that's how we impact other people's lives. 100%. Right, so as we talked about impact, kindness, happiness, so coming back to making a dead set impact in local, global, and digital school communities requires multiple voices. So according to you, how can teachers uh, help students uh, to empower their voice, choice, and agency? Wow, that's a big question too. Um, I think we have to really uh, think about what we do and how we can support. So um, when I push into classrooms and I teach digital citizenship, um, I don't look at, it, look at it as a separate thing from what else they're doing in the classroom. Um, you know, and, and I like to look at it as something that um, whatever they're doing, they have to think about what how that, that ripple effect, right? You, you talk about each one teach 10 creating that ripple. So um, for example, I, one of the schools that I work with, um, the seventh graders in that, in that school are learning Spanish um, and they've connected with a school in Honduras to be able to learn Spanish. They're learning about the UN SDGs around uh, clean water and sanitation. Um, and they're, they're learning about science by bio sand filters and, and thinking about how they can bring clean water to, to villages that may not have access to that. And I think that's really what it should look like in the classroom is how can we help ourselves locally? How can we um, help ourselves, you know, inside our school community, in our local community, and then beyond? I, I think that um, there's no reason that our, our schools can't be connected every day uh, with people from around the world. Uh, the technology is there and um, the, there are great teachers around the world that are already doing some great work. It's just connecting them to the right people. Um, and our students, I, I mean, Namia, look at you, right? You love connecting with others around the world and uh, you do some amazing work around that. Um, your whole book is about, is about um, helping others, right? So, um, and I can't wait to get my hands on it and actually read it, but it's, um, I, I think it's important for us to think about how we're using technology every day um, and really keeping the focus on how does this help and how does this, um, you know, how do, the help is the most important thing there. I think it's, it's just how can I help myself and how can I help others? Exactly. Ripple effect, connecting to the right people 
and how can we help the right people and everybody around us is what matters and that's how we can provide choice voice and agency to everybody absolutely right we want to make sure that uh everyone's voice is heard and that um that we're supporting whatever their needs are um wherever they are exactly so coming to the end of the podcast you would love to know where we can find you online and also we would love to have a message from you for the audience watching us sure so you can find me on twitter at at @smile learning um that is probably the easiest way to to get a hold of me and as far as my message uh, keep doing what you're doing um you know think of ways that you can bring kindness into the world uh think of ways you can integrate computer science uh make sure that you're practicing positive digital citizenship skills every day and everything that you do um and just remember that that you know it may seem small to you uh what you're able and capable of doing but it might be something that somebody else needs so so you know share your talents share your passions and um you know just just be the light that people need as they're going forth in the world i agree sharing passions and sharing our insights is actually like really great and larger than life in its own way and uh, listening to you today has this reminded me of this thing that your life has purpose your story is important your dreams count your voice matters and you were born to make an impact so thank you so much for being on my podcast lori thank you so much for having me namia it's been a pleasure thank you and thank you so much everyone for listening to this episode and i'll see you in the next one till then each one teach 10 have a nice day